The fight with the abominations was pretty chaotic. I think Mom's trinket would have dropped around here. Do you know what it looks like, Miss Chingni? <sighs> Let me think. It should be a little square thing. She's usually got something like that on her. This is your area of expertise. Your powers of perception are impressive, that's all. I think you're the right person for the job. A birdcage? Huh, that reminds me. Have you guys heard of the birds that live in the Everhunt Plains? They have beautiful feathers, but you can't domesticate them. They don't live long if you lock them in a cage. Makes sense. How could a bird that's known the sky live in a cage? <sighs> Come on, are you kidding? It's a trinket, remember? You think my mom would carry this with her? It's a beautiful vase, though. What an intricate pattern. Isn't that the Divine Beast fortune pattern? You're so smart, Mr. Yang. Well, I only recently found out about it. Devastator Glaive? Is this from the battle? There were a lot of Cloud Knights. Mm, no. This is only a replica. Probably some kind of film prop. Mom always carries this trinket around with her, but I never realized there was something inside. Is this... the Hunt Crust? <laughs> this is what pilots hang in their Starskiff cockpits for good luck. It must be very close to Helmmaster Yukong's heart. Let's head back, Miss Chingni. I think you should return this trinket in person. This is an opportunity for the two of you to talk. Uh, not yet. I want to go back later. There's something I hope you two can help me with first. If you want us to help you persuade your mother, I'm afraid that could be difficult. It's not easy to solve a family dispute as an outsider. Uh, no, you misunderstand. I just want to know what she's thinking. What turned an ace pilot, someone who loved to fly, into someone like her? I don't know, but I'm looking at that My mom clearly misses her flying days, otherwise she wouldn't keep this on her person. But she doesn't fly anymore and refuses to let me become a fighter pilot. Why? Maybe we can ask some people who might know the truth. Well... The General's been busy at the seat of Divine Foresight recently. We might not get to see him right away. Still, it's worth a try. He was the one who promoted Helmmaster Yukong. He probably knows more about her past than anyone. General Jing Yuan? Are you sure it's okay to go straight to him? Oh, <laughs> right. You're the General's guests. Even so, this is asking a lot of you. 
No problem. If we can get to the bottom of why Helm Master Yukong no longer flies, we might be able to find out why she doesn't want you to be a fighter pilot. We can't help you too directly, but an indirect conversation like this might give us a clue on how to convince your mother. Leave it to us. <laughs> yes, leave it to us. <laughs> In that case, thank you so much, Benefactors. I'll head back to Starskiff Haven. I'm not ready to return to the Skyfaring Commission yet. The next destination, up to you. Interesting. Would you like me to relay your message? Yes, yes, yes. Bro, just let us see the phone. Can you wait a little moment? The Master Diviner will be here soon. She's temporarily taken on the General's responsibilities. Before meeting you, she must make the current situation known and fortify public spirit. This is her first real test as a General. I hope she can get used to things quickly. I don't think I can ever get used to this. Oh god, I'm not as fucked up, but anyways, let's just... Yeah. It's a pleasure to see you all here today, collating casualties and losses, dispatching forces to round up the remnants of the Disciples, submitting battle reports to the Six Charioteers. Now I know what Jing Yuan meant when he said, the highest throne faces the strongest wins. Generalship is no trifling matter. How could I be enjoying myself? All I can do is get used to it. <laughs> I think she's enjoying herself. Master Diviner, have you summoned us here just to sigh and complain? Of course not. On the contrary. I am eager to thank you all in my official capacity as Acting General of the Law Fu. Now that things have drawn to a conclusion, it is time to reward you. Ooh, all those benefits that the General promised! They're finally here! Yippee! I feel like I'm gonna... Yes. The Astral Express has braved great evil for the Lafu. Your devotion is evident. After discussions with the Six Charioteers, you are henceforth sworn allies of the Lafu. Within the Lofu's jurisdiction, you are to be treated with the highest standard of diplomatic protocol. Thank you. On behalf of the Astral Express, I would like to thank you, Master Diviner. Oh, wow. Nothing tangible, then? Uh, but at least it sounds pretty cool. Now that things have been expressed, I still have something to discuss with you. Please, this way. Mr. Yang, and you, hm. what brings you to the Seat of Divine Foresight this time? It's nothing urgent. We were hoping to understand Helm Master Yukong a little better. Yukong? Hmm. I heard an office worker from the Skyfaring Commission flew a star skiff to assist in the present crisis, but ran into trouble herself. She was only saved thanks to a couple of travelers. On behalf of the Law Fu, you have my thanks once again. The Seat of Divine Foresight heard that Yu Kong seldom seen, but 
Often fear temper was on display. I believe the two of you were caught between mother and daughter. We heard that Helmmaster Yukong was an outstanding pilot, but that she refuses to let her daughter embark on the same career. Yu Kong herself is best placed to answer such questions. But naturally, you are here because you fear that Helmmaster Yu Kong would decline to answer. If you wish to dispel Miss Ching Ni's curiosity, perhaps we can take a small step back from the topic at hand. What do you wish to know about Yu Kong the pilot? Hey, my man. Divine arrow in oh. This is a divine object from the Rainbow Arbiter. Where did you find this? This object has been stored inside Helmmaster Yu Kong's personal trinket all along. Miss Ching Ni lent it to us. She thought it might be a way to find out more about Yu Kong's past and why she no longer flies. This object is no ordinary trinket. It has borne witness to blood and tears. But I'm sure you're both familiar with the Xianzhou's long galactic hunt. But have you heard of the denizens of Abundance Wars? As the Xianzhou has continued to cleanse the universe of immortal abominations, so too as the Abundance Axis succeeded in breaching our defensive lines. They pushed the Sienjo to the brink of disaster. Thirty years ago, the Sienjo, Yao Qing, and Fang Hu were besieged by our enemies. Even in the long history of warfare between the Sienjo Alliance and the denizens of Abundance, that air battle was one of the most tragic. We were greatly outnumbered by the abominations of abundance. Almost a million fighter pilots fought in the bitter battle. Those who survived numbered no more than a hundred thousand. Had the Rainbow Arbiter not descended and destroyed the enemy's assault with her sky-shattering Lux Arrow, who's to say whether the Law Fu would still be here today? Such divine objects were forged from the embers that the Arbiter's divine arrow left behind. For the survivors, these relics contain the blood of their comrades, the ashes of their enemies, and the dust of their memories. Yu Kong is a survivor of that war. Her best friend, Tsai Yi, perished on the battlefield. I don't have any other questions. Thank you, General. I do not wish to speculate on the reason behind Helmmaster Yukong's reluctance to fly. Nor do I want to open up old wounds. However, it is difficult to discard one's past. Yukong and Sai trusted each other with their lives. The Helmmaster will have strong memories of that time. Perhaps it is not my place to say, but I believe Ching Ni has the right to know about the past, as the past is starting to affect her future. Thank you, General. We apologize for taking up your time with such triviality. Mr. Yang, you jest. How can harmony between parent and child constitute a triviality? If you ask me, the mountains of documents and the seat of divine foresight are the only triviality around here. You tell us, <laughs> we'll take our leave. Let's go. We should head to Starskiff Haven and find Ching Ni.
You're here. My mom isn't in a great mood. She went for a walk. <laughs> My mom isn't the irresponsible type. She only skips work if she's managed to delegate everything. <laughs> you two are very similar. <laughs> well, we do both like to take a walk after a fight. The only difference is that I come to this side of Star Skiff Haven and she heads to the other. That way, we don't bump into each other. <laughs> really? I think it's silly. Anyway, did you find anything out from General Jing Yuan? Did Helmmaster Yukong never bring this up with you? <sighs> I was always curious about her past. But she either dodged my questions or pretended not to hear them. In the end, I realized she probably experienced something that left a scar. A scar that never fully healed. I never asked her again. She was afraid of you in the <laughs> Indeed. That's probably why Yukong was never willing to fly again after the battle. And why she forbids you from flying. So she doesn't want me to fly because she remembers the pain of losing her friend. And she thinks that my talent makes it more likely that she'll lose me in the same way? I can't guarantee that's what she's thinking, Miss Chingni. You should talk with her yourself. Hmm. You're right, Mr. Yang. But I still have something else to check first. This past that General Jing Yuan mentioned is probably archived in the Palace of Astrum. Whoa. Um, I, I remember watching her handle a document with great care before she filed it away. It looked like a diary. Uh, Do you still remember where it was filed, Miss Chingni? Uh, vaguely, but there are so many files stored in the Skyfaring Commission. Could I ask you benefactors to look for it with me? Hmm, uh, a couple of outworlders going through Skyfaring Commission files isn't a good look. I'm afraid we can only accompany you, Miss Chingni. You'll need to do the searching yourself. Uh, of course. You're right. Sorry. Mr. Yang Ming is a stickler for rules. I don't want to annoy him. Let's go to a different device. We can use this one. Okay. Hmm. Let me see. Helmmasters, personal archive. Oh, got it. Let's go take a look. It should be here. Let's see. Yes! This is Mom's diary! Miss Chingni, I don't think the two of us should be reading your mother's diary. It should be fine. This is from decades ago. For you travelers, that's more than half a lifespan. Uh, no, I still think I shouldn't read it. You stay here with Miss Chingni. I'll be waiting over there. <sighs> Fine. Is it really that big of a deal? I'm sure they're just her notes on life as a pilot. Come on, please look at it with me. I need someone to give me some advice. Let's read it together. Maybe her diary holds the key to all of this. Oh my god. Okay. I am not reading all this shit, so well, I am going to read it, but not on video, so you guys can like 
pause and read through it. I'm just gonna go through it like this. of this the helm master's daughter bringing outworlders in to sneak around what do you have in your hands let me see madam yukong's diary how dare you read madam yukong's personal diary and with her daughter too by the arbiter you two are in for a mr yang mean please calm down let us explain I see. Ching Ni, I know Madame Yukong's position on you becoming a pilot is tough for you to accept, but she has her own concerns. I, I understand, Mr. Ying Ming. But now, compared to becoming a fighter pilot, I'm more interested in knowing what my mom went through. I want to know what happened, how she went from ace pilot to helm master. <sighs> I've been here for a long time, Ching Ni. If there's something you wish to know, just ask. But don't go rummaging around. That's a bad habit. Miss uh, Tsai? I remember her. She was an ace gunner. Many people wanted to be her flight partner. Her husband, Mr. Guang Yuan, was a pilot. They manned the same skiff and were the envy of many. But when it came to pilots, your mother was the best match for her. They flew together all the time. Even Mr. Guanyan couldn't match their numbers. Well, after he passed away in battle, Tsai rarely teamed up with anyone except your mother. It was tragic when Tsai died soon after. That's the life of a pilot. No one knows which flight will be their last. Yep. Tsai's death was a big blow to Madame Yukong. After the battle, she refused to turn in Sai's possessions as per regulations. She kept them locked away, occasionally taking them out to admire. Oh, oh, I, as her subordinate, surely I should be concerned with her mental well-being. If Madame Yukong is unhappy, how can I be happy? I mean to say, how can I be happy in my duties to her? Where are Miss Tsai's possessions stored? Thanks for telling us all this, Mr. Yang Ming. You're welcome. I know this is important to you. I suppose you're going to go through Madame Yukong's office desk next. I can understand your position, Ching Ming. I'll take my leave and pretend I didn't see anything. After all, it's an unwritten rule that subordinates should be absent when their superior's privacy is exposed. Please don't tell your mother that you saw me today. <laughs> Got it. Thank you, Mr. Yang. So much for starting to security. Ensuring the security of public assets and order is the duty of every Xianzhou citizen. Hurry. Madam Yukong will be back soon. Uh, my mom keeps lots of stuff in her desk. Let's have a look. That's the selling point of this desk. Super simplistic design with super spacious hidden compartments. Lots of office staff use this desk. Uh, there are hidden compartments on the left, right, and under the desktop. Which one should we check first? A paper kite, personal letters, and a copy of Otherworldly Delights? So mom likes these kinds of novels? Huh, I thought she'd prefer more heroic stuff. But what we're looking for isn't here. Uh, there are hidden compartments on the okay. left. Okay. There's some exhibition material, not sure if it's relevant. 
This is the Fallen Heroes archive. Mom stored them right next to her. Every time our pilots returned from the battlefield, my mother would tell me never to forget the cost of victory. But what we're looking for isn't here. Uh, there are hidden compartments. Got it. Hmm. This looks similar to Mom's diary. But it looks like it belonged to Miss Tsai. Okay, same as last time. I was adopted in this Miss Sai was my real mother. I suppose I've always had a feeling, but now I know the truth. I feel like I'm dreaming. Don't let that child touch the sky. Is this why mom refuses to let me become a fighter pilot? When I was little, I asked my mom where my dad was. <laughs> she said I was grown from the Star Skiff assembly line at Stargazer Navalia. I thought she was just a bad liar. I even thought she meant I'd inherited her talent with Star Skiffs. I feel a lot closer to mom after reading this diary even if we're not connected by blood. I understand her a lot more now. <sighs> hmm. Can you come with me one more time? I want to have a proper chat with mom. Yes. Thank you. You're all done? Did it go smoothly? I see. Let's find Helmmaster Yukong. We'll accompany you. We're here to help, but she and I really shouldn't interject when you're conversing with your mother. Hmm. It's okay. I understand. Just having you stand next to me is already a great help, benefactors. When mom feels down, she usually goes to take in a view of the Jade Gate. She should still be there. Let's go find her. So they also hold few. Mom? Ching Ni? Why are Mr. Yang and they here too? Miss Ching Ni kindly agreed to show us around Star Skiff Haven. She mentioned she was trying to mend things between you, but was feeling shy about it. We volunteered to come with her. Thank you. I must apologize for the trouble my daughter has brought you. <sighs> Mom! All right, it's getting late. Let's talk once we're home. Actually, I want to talk to you about something right now. I want to become a fighter pilot, no matter what. <sighs> We've talked about this many times. No means no. Uh, but... Seems like Miss Ching Ni is a little hesitant. Uh, try giving her a little push. I thought Mr. Yang said we shouldn't interject. What should I say? Is that... Sai's diary? How did you... I understand now. I'm sorry, Ching Ni. I cannot support your dream because... I made a promise to someone else. I don't expect to gain your forgiveness. 
just hope you can understand my reason. Mom, what are you talking about? I'm your daughter. <laughs> Our bond is bigger than forgiveness and reason. I'll listen to anything you have to say. Just like you. I once longed for the sky. I know what it feels like to fly through infinite space, to be surrounded by the vast expanse of nothingness, with unimaginable splendors looming in the distance, to float like a single leaf in the fathomless stellar sea. Some called it loneliness, but we called it freedom. Sai was like that too. We were friends since childhood. We flew star skiffs everywhere, causing trouble until the knights caught us and dragged us before General Jingyuan. We soon became the most elite fighter pilots of the Skyfaring Commission. It wasn't an easy life. You could even say it was a cruel one. You never knew if the friend next to you would make it back alive. Of course, the same could be said of yourself. But those are my best memories. We would strike out into the sky, repelling demons and upholding justice. The blood we shed bore witness to it all. The life of a Foxian is short and fleeting. Surely we should dedicate ourselves to such glorious aims. Oh, system space all clear today. Great weather for flying. We're engaging the main Boris and fleet this time. Don't get too excited. Huh? Sounds like maternity leave knocked the wind out of your sails. Feeling rusty? Oh, shut it. I think you're just excited because you haven't flown with me for so long. Did you miss me? Of course I missed you. The galaxy felt smaller without you in my cockpit. Say, Sai, really didn't think you'd come back. Do you really like flying star skiffs that much? <laughs> you bet. Sure, it's exhausting, dangerous, low paid. <laughs> Plus, you only get back to the Lafu a few times a year. But given the choice, I'd always pick this. I guess I already touched the sky. Mind is mysterious. I've lived for more than 200 years, forgotten nearly every conversation I've ever had. But I still remember us shooting the breeze that day. It's crystal clear. It was the last time I spoke to Tsai. <laughs> Tsai? Hold on, Tsai. Sai, open your eyes! Sai! Thank you. You go. I... I've had a good life. But please... Don't let Jinli walk the same path. Don't let her... Become a fighter pilot. Sai, she's your daughter. You'll be able to tell her yourself, do you hear? The rescue's almost here. Stay with me. Jing Ni is waiting for you. She lost Guang Yan. She can't afford to lose you, too. Wake up! Sai! When I climbed out of the burning carcass of the star skip, I looked up into a clear sky, pure and seemingly unadorned by the atmosphere that arced far above us. 
was the most beautiful sky I had ever seen. All I could feel was unbearable pain. I sunk to the ground and gazed up helplessly. In my dream, that was the day I died. Mom, this is the first time I've heard you talk about this. But I'm not a little girl anymore. The road of a fighter pilot is a cruel one. I know that now, but I won't hide from it. I'm not afraid to walk the same road as her. If my sacrifice can bring happiness to the citizens of the Sienjo, then I'm ready for it. You are so very similar to Tsai. The more outstanding you became over the years, the more fearful I turned. I've known for a long time you were ready, but I was not. No, the cruelty has never claimed victory. Me, Sai, your father, Guangyan. We were prepared for the worst when we enlisted. Do you know how we won that war? The war that took away Sai and the lives of hundreds of thousands of fighters. The Rainbow Arbiter's Define Arrow. Yes. The mighty blessing of the Rainbow Arbiter annihilated all abominations in a single strike. But we had to pay with the blood of hundreds of thousands of soldiers just to halt their advance. If crushing our enemies was as easy as breathing for the Rainbow Arbiter, then what purpose did our sacrifices serve? Under the might of an eon, the sacrifices of ordinary creatures are but a joke. We are nothing. We mean nothing. Mom. But I never should have allowed my fears to compel me to make decisions for another person. <laughs> Even if that person is my daughter, I brazenly interfered with your choices. I am sorry. That is my failure as a mother. Mom. You don't need to apologize. Really, you don't need to. I'll take you to fill in the paperwork tomorrow. You'll start as ground crew, just like Tsai and I did. I believe that one day, you'll make an outstanding fighter pilot. Huh? Really? <laughs> Thank you, Mom. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I was afraid of you following in my footsteps. And more afraid of you taking after Tsai. But if this is your choice, then I'm willing to support you. Even if you live to regret it. Mom? I have one last request. Tell me. I want to... Fly with you at least once. <laughs> I'm afraid I can't. I won't be flying anymore. But why? Because I already touched the sky. So they also hold funerals. Huh.